with respect to objects and classes could anybody recall different types of functions that we had discussed students pure function and modifiers okay pure function and the modifiers so what is the pure function can anybody tell pure function that does not change the arguments okay so the function can take any arguments objects as an argument the function should compulsorily take uh, at least one object as an argument object when i tell it can be of any class right one object as an at least one when i mean to say at least one means one is compulsory more than one is also allowed so when it takes at least one object as an argument make sure that the object of, that is passed as an argument is not being um, modified okay you just use the contents of the object but as the modifier will also take the objects as the arguments but then it will uh, modify the uh, object which is passed as an argument i think we have seen the various um, um, functions based on uh, Pure, pure functions and the modifiers with respect to the time class, isn't it? Right. And I think I had given you also few assignments. So just check it out. Okay. So we'll discuss that after uh, this topic. Okay. So coming on to today's topic, uh, that is again the module four. Uh, we have dealt with classes and objects, classes and functions. Today we are dealing with classes and methods. Okay. So uh, till now. whatever we wrote okay the programs that we wrote so we saw about uh, the recap their time class pure functions the modifiers and we saw two kinds of uh, writing programs prototype development and planning uh, way right how it could work and then the assignment which we had seen the agenda of today's class is now the usage of methods how exactly we write methods and we work on methods then a special parameter that is a self parameter and then a special method in it okay followed with a demo and the assignment so till today i mean till what we have covered with respect to it, it could be a time class or it could be a rectangle class or it could be your point class uh, did we really implement the object oriented feature there did we implement that object oriented features yeah. students we had a class we had an object the real implementation of uh, op was it done anybody is there in the class no one is no ma'am okay so you could see that we were still following Uh, doing our task by using normal functions say for example adding two time objects i had a add function printing i had one print function so till now whatever we wrote we had a function outside the class uh, using my objects manipulating my objects but then when i talk about class it is actually a uh, binding between the data and the methods methods are nothing but the functions defined inside the class that means to say only the methods which are there in the class will have access to the um, attributes or which we call as the data inside the class only methods should have access that's what actually the op concept means so till now we wrote only functions so now on whatever we write we will start using methods so in your exams when they ask you to write function write whatever we have seen till now methods methods are nothing but again they are functions which are defined inside the class definition wherein the way we invoke and all will slightly vary okay so now we make sure that our objects of a particular class will be accessed only within the method of that particular class so nowhere outside the method right so we want such kind of thing to happen here with respect to object oriented features 
So Python, as we all know, it is an object-oriented programming language, which means that it provides certain OP features, right? So as we know, the program should include class and the method definitions, right? And all the computations that you do, whether it is a reading or writing, or that's printing or something adding, something, whatever it is, whatever computation you have with respect to the class should be expressed in terms of operations on the objects. So I want the objects to compute the operations or the computations through the method. So I don't want any functions now. I want the method to do the job, okay, whatever I want to with respect to the objects, right? And we all know that the objects are the one which represents uh, the real world entities, right? The real things in the real world. And methods will correspond to the way the things in the world interact. So for example, if I take a time class, if we all know that the time class will tell you, it's a real world entity. The object of a time class will tell you how the people will record the time of the day. So when I ask you time, obviously, you will tell in terms of hour, in terms of minutes, and in terms of seconds. Most of the time, we don't deal with second. We will tell um, hour and the minute. So now, what is the time? If I ask you, you might tell me it's 9.30 or whatever it is, right? And the functions, whatever we now define, right? People, whatever people try to do with the times, that is what we did, isn't it? Say, so for example, adding two times, OK? Suppose say uh, start of the event is given, end of the event is given to you. So what is the duration? How long the event goes? So you will think, right? That's what you try to interact with your real world things, right? So the functions will correspond or the methods will correspond to the way the things in the world interact, how they try to uh, play around in the real world. So when I give you start time, end time, so event, you will think how much duration it takes anything right so you when i tell you class at nine o'clock okay you will think okay nine o'clock is the class so how long it might go how long right so you will think like that so the different things we try to interact when we have classes and the oh, sorry the objects and the methods so the more concentration of today's class is writing methods okay there's methods there's nothing great there uh, they are also like functions, semantically. When I tell semantically, the meaning remains the same. There's no change, right? But with two differences, syntactically. So syntactically, when I write methods, there's slightly two differences. The first difference is the methods are defined where? Inside the class or outside the class students? Where inside the, the class. Method? The class definition. So we will put the method of my corresponding class, which does the required job to me inside the class definition, wherein the relationship will become uh, more explicit there. Okay, that means what I mean to say is, this method will do this job for my class. Isn't it? So explicitly, it just tells you, this is how it works, right? The next difference is, for invoking a method, this is a slightly different. How do I invoke a method? Okay, different from the syntax of calling a function. So, how do you call a function? Can anybody tell? How do you call a function? The syntax for calling a function, students. In general, any function is given to you. How do you call a function? Are you all there? Function name. Function name. Then open parenthesis followed with the arguments, whether it is a zero or one or two, what not. Okay. But then method is slightly different. So this is not the way you call. When I have a method inside a class, how do you call is a way that it differs. So semantically, same. Okay. Meaning uh, whatever is uh, that everything. Syntax is also same. Only difference is two difference. We define it inside the class. Invoking uh, method is a different way. So let us now see the differences between a normal function and the method by using a function called as a print time. So we have already defined a class called as a time. So I have a print time like this. Okay. Can anybody tell me print time is a method or a, 
a function here. Is it a function. method or a fun function? Function. Function. It's clearly observed that it is outside my class definition, right? It's outside. It's a function. So I have taken one argument here, which prints my R minute and the seconds there. Now to call this function, as you all said, um, I am having this function uh, to print the time object here. So I have to create one object of time class, initialize the attributes here, right? So what are these attributes? R, minute and second, what kind of attributes they are? What kinds of attributes? Instance or class? What kind of attributes they are students? Students, instance or class? It's still you have the instance. instance attributes. See, remember, instance attributes are, are having or I can tell uh, they maintain a separate copy for every object. Okay. And class attribute means it is defined inside the class. The name only tells you. Class attributes means it is defined inside the class and a single copy will be shared by all instances or all objects. Just try to know the difference. Okay. Then I'm calling the function print time. I'm, since it is printing my object, that is the start, I have to pass the argument. Definitely start. Start and t. Now can just anybody tell me uh, what is t to me? Here? Object. Ob no, no, no. T is an object. It is what? It is a separate object or it is an ins oh, sorry, it is a reference to what? Is it a reference? Reference to start. It is a reference to start. Very simple as it is. So T and start will point to the same uh, memory block. Okay. So I have just printed. That's it. Now the same thing I want to do with methods now. Okay. So let me write a method. So very simple. As you know, a method is a one whose function definition will be present inside the class definition. So if I have to push this um, uh, print time inside the class, I mean, if I have to make this as a method, what should I do students? I should place it where? In the, in the class. Class. Okay, so I'll again write the header, the class header, then with an indent, remember, see you should notice the change in the indentation. So you should place it within the class definition means it should be indented. So def print type, the same thing goes on. Very simple as it, just move it inside the class definition. Now. The first thing you got it. So how, what should you do? You should place the function inside the class definition. So you should give a, while typing, you give a normal indent, one indent to be given. So if I give one indent, then it means it's inside the class now. So print time is now a method inside the class time. Okay. First thing I have told you. The second thing is now, how do we invoke this method? So to invoke this method, now it is no more a function, it is a method using dot notation. So I have to use the dot notation in two ways. Okay. The first way here is, can you observe? What is this time for me? Can you observe this time? What is this? What is time? Students. Class name. Followed with dot then the function name, sorry, method name, then the start. So I have to print the start object, isn't it? So I have called this method, remember? So method cannot be invoked uh, independently. So you should use dot notation and followed, I mean, prefixed with class name, the first way. And whatever you want to deal with, pass it as an argument. The other way you are all familiarized with, can anybody tell me how do you call in the other way? Uh, Java, I think, would have studied. What should you, how do you call it? Students, the other way, a prefix to, to 
dot or before to dot what should i write i wrote here class name what can i write students object object name so i want to print start right so what should i write what should i write students speak out speak out what should you write start dot print time print time start dot print time very simple as it is start dot print time so this method what i just told you now start dot print time is wherein start is the object and print time is my method so this indicates that print time is a method in the time class and start is the object using which i am invoking the method okay so internally again this uh, uh, the interpreter when it sees this it does some modification i mean it does some conversion so i will just tell you that with an example okay okay just look into this is a uh, um editor visible students yes yes so i have just written this um can anybody tell me print time is what here print time is what function function this is a normal function it's not a method there so i have used t there so i will see here also no issues um okay so let me call the function now uh to call the function how do you write what should i write here calling the function calling the function, function name followed by parenthesis um uh, print underscore time and i want to print the object that is a start so i'll pass the argument there very simple as it is just taken a small example there okay can you see just observe this see when i write method what happens you just observe now you see this time class uh, what kind of a class is this anybody can guess time class what kind of a class is this there is nothing inside the class so can i tell time is a time is a dash class what kind of a class empty empty class so it's an empty class you can see there is no nothing see usually class will have attributes methods as of now there is nothing so it is an empty class where it contains only a doc string that's it if you don't want to write doc string you can also write what students what is the keyword which you can write here make pass pass you can write that okay i have written a doc string no problem so just observe this when i change it to method what happens we will just see next a uh, start a uh, print time can you just see print time is now a function very simple as it is okay start is a time instance just observe this portion students okay our as so and so and next i am calling the function print time start and you can see the argument here is t and you all know that t is no more a separate copy or a new copy it is a reference to which one students reference start start can you see in print time the argument t is a reference to start they are both are pointing to the same memory location yes so it will print so is printed very simple as it is okay now let me make this as a method so if i have to make this as a method what should i do students what should i do here after now make this as a method what should i do given i should put indentation i should place it in a um, the definition of the class very simple so i should put it in the class definition so you should should be indented remember it should be indented now the calling will now slightly different the first way as i told you time dot um print underscore time passing the argument which is now start okay this is now observe what happens sorry this is method calling the 
right next could you see this now earlier time class was what students empty isn't it yes or no yes or no students yes ma'am yes ma you can now see the time class now contains a method right which is nothing but a function can you see it is a function but which is inside the class there okay okay then again start as a time instance which has the attributes hour minute and second now this see what does the interpreter do looking at this the print time when it sees the dot operator and the class name it gets to know that this print time is inside the class time okay so it will automatically jump to it can you see can you see the arrow mark the red arrow mark which was here automatically it will jump to this so it gets to know it gets to know that using the syntax it is in the thing and you can now see t t which is an argument there is nothing but a reference to stat as usual okay prints as usual fine this is also correct but most of the time we prefer calling the method through an object right start dot print underscore time okay now you might tell me mom uh, here you have given one argument but you are not passing any parameter here correct yes or no it is having one argument i'm not passing any parameter let's see what happens basically right let's see okay the same thing start okay just look at this start dot print time so when again the interpreter sees this start is an object of which class which class time time so it gets to know now print time is a method inside the time class and then whatever is the invoking object will be passed as an argument to the function by the interpreter so you need not have to worry about it right just see observe now it is pass as an argument can you see now t is a reference to which argument parameter sorry which object the start automatically it will do the job for me okay then it again prints the same so this way of writing will automatically convert to this way print underscore time and the invoking object will be passed as an the argument and remember the invoking object whatever you are giving will be passed as an argument right as the first argument only i try to understand it's a first argument very important right so invoking object will always be passed as an argument to a method which is always the first one clear students clear yes or no yes ma'am i have one doubt ma'am yes ma tell me ma'am what if we have two or more arguments is it when in here okay yes ma'am well i am now uh, writing add time okay so add will do what it will add two times right okay so for example i am just taking an example may not be uh, the content may not be the appropriate okay so let you initialize it whatever it is now i want to add two time that is start and the end and when this is a method you will have one invoking object already yes that is my start and the other object that you need is what students the end okay so start is already the invoking object so it's done so i just want to do addition of what ma addition of two time objects what are the two time objects start and end so start is one of the object which acts as the invoking object and the end is the other object now where do i give the end 
n should be now passed as an argument getting and here now at time we'll have two time objects p1 and p2 getting yes yes ma'am okay now this will be internally in, by the interpreter interpreted as print time start will be the first argument always start means to say the invoking object will be your first argument comma and then the remaining arguments will be given by the interpreter only understood understood ma yes ma'am so start what or start or whatever it is the invoking object will be always passed as the first argument and then the remaining arguments will go on is that clear is that clear ma yes ma'am it's clear so for example here i will give uh, second some argument okay then this will become second like this internally that's how it does so the invoking object will be passed as the first argument always so when you write the code you should take the appropriate measures is that clear i think i am you are clear with the doubt yes ma'am it's clear okay now uh you can give any name so no problem but preferably uh, when uh, we are dealing with methods what we do is uh, we can uh, give a special name to the first argument as we all know the first argument will be always what referring to what the first parameter in any method will refer to which object students invoking invoking object so what we do is some um, uh, what do you tell convention programming convention they followed by the programmers so the first parameter of the method of any method we take we call it as self so remember self is not a keyword no you can give any name if you want to give any name you can give no problem it's not a keyword right so self so one convention that we follow is the first parameter of any method is called self which is a reference to the invoking object it is a reference to the invoking object so we give the word self because the method is invoked by an object so that is called as a self object right right so that's the reason we give that uh, thing so the slight modification when i can do with the print time here is instead of t i will use what now self so remember self is a one which refers to the invoking object remember it is not referring to any other object it refers only to the invoking object the rest all instead of t i will use self that's all the rest remains the same correct students is that students are you getting yes, okay so now let us uh, uh, modify our uh, code here um okay fine i'll also tell add time how you can do it okay so instead of now giving any other name we all know that see any method you write any method you write the first argument or the first parameter should be right should be what ma should be named as what self so remember self will always refer or it's a reference to the invoking object it's always a reference to the invoking object right so now let us see let us see how this works let's see okay again it is the same can you just see self self is pointing to which object i mean referring to which object start, start. what is start to me the invoking object and remember why i gave self as first parameter because my invoking object will always be passed as the first argument right right so you should make sure that you write it properly so you need not have oh sorry here i should you could have 
you should change here also yeah uh, cell because it work right cell can you see it's a reference to the start itself right that's it okay you need not have to give self you can give anything no problem okay now suppose say i want to add two time objects now okay so what should i pass a start is my first object so the other object is end so i should pass it as an argument now start comma end will be taken so start is my first parameter and end is the second parameter which will be passed by the interpreter now what is the change in the definition mark what should i give in the method definition first argument first one should be always what self and self is a reference to which one here in the start start the other one is a, the other argument so you can give something like t defects right anything you can give so you can either give t or you can give uh, self so self followed with a t or you can give any other name t or any other name you can give but programming convention here is try to give self self is a one which points to the or refers to the invoking object understood students i hope i am clear with that yes students yes ma'am okay so the special we will now just talk about is the initialization method which you call it as the init method so this init method is uh, something similar to your constructor all right uh, can anybody tell me what is the constructor a method having same name as that of class, class name uh, what is the job of the constructor allocation of the memory. allocation of memory okay then to initialize the the variables. variables or the attributes once object is created right so one the job of the constructor is to actually it will first allocate the memory required memory and initializes the um, data members right uh once and you should remember that uh when uh, whenever the object is created it will initialize it and you should also remember that the constructors are not invoked by the programmer automatically it gets invoked when the class class so automatically it just gets invoked whenever an object is being created similarly we have the init method which does the job of initializing the attributes okay whenever the object is created so for example ptu is equal to point i write okay so as of now an object is created i have not initialized the attributes nothing when i try to use p2.x print it so we thinking that point is having two attributes x and y i try to print p2.x so definitely i will get an error so called what and attribute error isn't it so what should i do here is i should have done something like initializing the object whenever the object got created so i should have a constructor here to do the job but i don't have a constructor here but i have a special method so called as initialization method right so what is an initialization method does for me uh, so shortly we call it as init so we don't write initialization there init so init is a special method that gets invoked when an object is instantiated so whenever an object is created a special method will be invoked and that is called as a init method so how do you write the init method yes, there are the special methods you should uh, start with 2 underscore and end with 2 underscores so 2 underscore init 2 underscores so it is like this 
to see def normal keyword to underscore in it to underscore in it and it is a method so definitely there will be an invoking object so the first argument should be what students self self invoke and we know that point will have two attributes x and y so i have given two arguments two more extra arguments x and y right self dot x so the invoking object self it is initializing self dot x equals to x whatever you pass self dot y equals to y right is that clear hope i am um, clear i show one small example that will be clear for you and then we'll quit okay this point so there how do i write in it first you should put how many underscores two underscores two words self is compulsory for any method apart from that whatever arguments you want you can give okay um colon so self dot x equals to x can anybody tell me what this is doing self dot y equals to y Let's see what will happen now. Okay. See, just see the point class has a init method, right? And what is that init method having? Three arguments. The self is a point, uh, reference to the invoking object, and it go, it has. Uh, or uh, two or uh, other arguments that is x and y x and y and it has got default values 0 and 0 okay so see what will happen now in it self right is an uh, point instance and the self is now having two arguments that is x and y initialized to 10 and 20 why because i have passed the argument here 10 and 20 so 10 and 20 will be my x and y respectively okay right can you just see right the self is now a point instance where x and y of self is initialized to 10 and 20 and can you see after that what happened you see can you see the differences students see when this was the case it will jump so when it sees this look uh, uh, line it has to create the object initialize x and y of that object to 10 and 20 and then return that object to p right that's what it does here can you just see under the init method self is still just a point instance it created a new object self right so now 10 and 20 there to see what happens self x gets 20 y gets uh, sorry x gets 10 y gets 20 and then can you see the difference the uh, init method vanish the object is now pointed by which object now p so you can now see the object is automatically initialized with x and y values by using the init method yes suppose if i don't pass the arguments what do you think p is x value and the y value what do you think p will have it will have two attributes x and y because i have already creating it x and y are the two attributes what are the values of x and y students if i don't pass any argument zero zero zero, zero. zero. you can see it will be zero yes suppose say i pass only one argument 10 tell me 10 is assigned to which attribute 
of ten is assigned to which address? Y gets the default value that is zero. Understanding, students? Yes. yes I hope you are getting it. It is similar to. Yes, ma'am. The only difference is you should pass um, self first parameter should always be as it is. Okay. This is just the assignment to you all. Just try doing it. We'll discuss it in the next class. Try doing it. Okay. I have, I have two questions for you all. Um, in Java, instead of self, there was something used there. Which also referred to the invoking object. Can anybody guess the name? It is a keyword in Java. Yes. Yes. So this pointer. So this pointer is the same in Java as well as in C plus plus, which is similar to self, which refers to the invoking object. Wherein the only difference is self is not a keyword. It is a convention followed. That's all. The normal word, whereas this is a keyword, right? Okay. Then the next is uh, why I need method. Why I need method? On what occasion method will be useful to us? Depending on which attributes. Okay. Right now, all your uh, attributes x, y, or whatever it is, hour, minute, they are all what kind of attributes, students? Uh, it is it a pri private instance, no, no, a private or public or protected i'm talking in this sense are they private public or protected private is uh, that attributes private if it was private i couldn't have accessed outside the class i'm i am accessing it what kind of attributes they are? Public. 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 They are all public attributes. Remember, by default, even in Python, I, yeah, yeah, Python, the attributes remain public. But when I make private attributes or protected attributes, can it be accessed outside the class? No, ma'am. No, you should have what to access them. You should have what to access them. Who can access? Instances Anything? of the class. Instances can access it via what? Via what? Via the methods. So you, you can access it only via the methods, but not via the functions. So you should have methods to access the uh, uh, private attributes or the protected attributes. Okay, we'll see that in the next class. So I just want you people to do only this first two methods. Yeah, write one init method that initializes it. Kangaro is a class which has got two attributes, name and pouch contents. Okay, to so see how you can design it, try to work on it. We will see it in the next class. Okay, any doubts, ma'am? Any no. doubts, students? Okay. Methods first should be what all parameters should be what always quickly. First parameter should be what students? Self. 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 Okay. Self always refers to what? It's a invoking object. The invoking object. So method definition. Uh, method is defined where? Sorry. Inside, inside the, the class. Inside the class. So how can we access a method? How can we call the method? What should I write to call the method? Quickly. Either class name or object of object the name or provided with a dot operator. Yes. Okay. What is similar to a constructor in Python? Init. 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 How do you write init method? Init method. Syntax, how do you write? Two, two underscores followed with init keyword, then followed with underscore. Two okay, underscores. I think we are done with it. See you in the next class, students. Thank you.
थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू